with Stephen Cook scoring his maiden first-class 100 against his former employers at the home of cricket, Northamptonshire had their best day of the summer to date, passing a tough follow-on target which should mean that they bring an end to their horrible losing run. The penultimate day of their LV County Championship match with Middlesex at Lords began with them in a spot of bother again, responding to their host total of 488 for 9 with one of 89 for 3. James Kettleborough, a former Middlesex Academy and second eleven player, continued where he'd left off in his debut innings, but was a little fortunate when he was put down in the gully of Toby Rowland-Jones. The 21-year-old would have been thrilled to get his maiden first-class 50 at a club he was at for a number of years. He'd started the day on 42 and reached his half-century after 15 minutes of day three of 71 balls. This three off Stephen Finn took him there and it also struck eight fours against a side he captained successfully at under-17 level. He then turned down and moved to Northamptonshire to stay at the Middlesex Academy for two years. Rob Newton took Finn for three fours in the same over before he was the first man out in the morning for 35 as he was trapped in front by Roland Jones. That left the visitors on 116 for four and they still needed a further 223 runs to avoid being asked to follow on. Only seven more runs had been added when Finn took a good return catch to remove Ben Duckett for five. It looked as if it would be the same old story for North Ants this season, especially as they were not going to be able to call on the services of Rob Keogh, who damaged a finger in the slips on the first day. Kettlebra's innings then took on extra importance. He'd batted through the first session, but then edged Finn to Owen Morgan early in the second one. His debut championship innings ended on 73. On 168 for 6, effectively 7 without Keogh, the follow-on looked a certainty and had Finn won this appeal for LBW against Crook, then the escape would have been almost impossible. Andrew Hall was also missed in the slips, but it seemed just a matter of time before Middlesex would grab their next wicket. Instead, Crook, who spent a couple of years at Middlesex but mostly in the one-day format, bedded in and soon began to look good against his former teammates. This was just the start of what was to become a very special innings for the all-rounder on what was a very special day for him. He had the ideal man at the other end in Hall, an experienced player who's shown his fighting qualities in a few matches in spite of his size fragility. He was first to his 50 which arrived off his 110th delivery an innings thus far containing six fours. By now he'd added 70 runs with Crook and the idea of avoiding the follow-on was just taking shape. Against Northamptonshire was that they have had moments like this before this season, only for everything to then work against them. That was not the case this time. Crook's half-century came from 61 balls. He got there with a cut off Joe Denley which brought the batsman his 10th boundary. He was starting to enjoy himself as he and Hall closed in on a 100 partnership, something rather rare for the county this year. Indeed, it had happened only twice before this summer, but these two did get there and they started to close in on that follow-on avoidance target as the afternoon wore on. Crook had hit 16 50s in his first-class career, this being his 95th innings, and his top score of 97 was made some nine years ago in his first spell with Northamptonshire. Getting his side close to the important target of 339 was perhaps more on his mind than three figures at this stage. Northamptonshire were 27 runs short of that target when this partnership was ended on 144, the county's highest of the season, Hall being bowled by Finn for an excellent 75, his best effort of the summer. Crook, though, remained and he cut Finn to the boundary to move yet closer to a three-figure score for the first time in his career. He did his best to get out before he got there, but then, to his 103rd delivery, he slashed Roland Jones to the grandstand boundary to bring him his 20th four and to get his heart racing. He later admitted that he plays his cricket living by the sword and dying by the sword. He was certainly living here and enjoying every moment of it. He's a man who loves his cricket and loves to entertain, and all those in the game that know him would have been delighted by his success. 
with the follow-on indeed avoided as well, Crook could now really enjoy himself. Three more fours followed as he moved on to 131. That's where his memorable knock was ended as he came down the wicket to Ravi Patel to be stumped. His 131 had occupied only 124 balls and it was an innings that might yet resurrect his county's season. He'd come in with his side on 168 for 6 and left with a total reading 379 for 8. Five runs later, Morris Chambers, who'd supported Crook admirably for an hour, was bowled by Patel for 20. With Keogh unable to bat, North Hants were all out for 384 to trail by 104 runs. Finn, the pick of the bowlers, with figures of 4 for 110. Chris Rogers and Nick Gubbins then added 22 runs to that lead in six and a half overs. Before Northamptonshire's best day of the summer ended in just the right way for them, as their former player Rogers pulled Chambers to Kettleborough after making 18. Gubbins and Darwin Milan batted out the remaining four overs to take the total to 30 for one at the close, and that gives Middlesex a lead of 134 runs with a day to go. This was, without doubt, Crook's day, but the game is not over yet, and his side will hope that they don't let things slip on the final day.